Hello, <clears throat> this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm sorry about my appearance, I look a little bad because it's kind of early and I haven't, you know, had a shower yet. But I needed to take a moment, my god it's bright out here, I need to take a moment to correct something I saw on the internet posted by Steve Silence. Steve, and I've, I've seen other people say this too, says that he knows a uh, some prominent physicist or a chemist or, a su uh, or some such person who says that Geiger counters can only detect gamma radiation. And that they, of course, then cannot detect uh, uh, plutonium, and plutonium and uranium. I, I need to correct something first because this always drives me nuts. First thing, Geiger counters, like the one in my hand, uh, they can detect gamma. Many of them can detect beta, alpha, and even x-ray, like mine can detect all four. It says so on the back, just in case you don't want to take my word for it. I'm not a, I'm not a, a physicist. I never claim to be. I'm a computer scientist. Let's see if you can read the back here. You see it says detects, uh, let's see, what does it say? Detects alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray. And if, of course you actually see, look closely. There. And if you buy the actual uh, model, you can look up the book yourself and see. I don't, it kind of dismays me that the scientist wouldn't know this. I would think that maybe, that maybe he just missed heard him because the scientists would know that even the old CDB 700 Geiger counters from back in the days of your, yeah, even those could detect gamma and beta. They just couldn't detect alpha. And the only reason they couldn't detect alpha is because the, the thin end on their, um, well, they didn't have a thin end on their Geiger Mueller tube. They were too thick. The beta, I mean, the alpha couldn't get through. Let me quickly explain to you what a Geiger Mueller tube does. Maybe that will make more sense. It is a tube. It is a metal tube, a little metal tube full of gas. Okay, it's got a gas in there, kind of like a fluorescent light bulb. When you have a fluorescent light bulb and you shoot electricity through it, the fluorescent light bulb lights up, right? It catches the electricity, spits off light. And nobody jump on me because I don't want to get into the concepts of explaining how electrons get gathered up and emitted and then how a photon comes out of that, because I'm not trying to get too deep into that right now. But I will if you want me to, so I'm not against it. But the point is, same basic effect. When a Geiger Mueller tube is full of gas, it has a little tiny metal rod that goes down the middle of it usually. Although they can be designed differently, but this is the way it usually works. Electrical power is either administered to the casing or to the little rod down the middle. It doesn't matter which one. And when the, there's almost enough electricity going down the rod to jump through the gas to the wall, but not quite enough. When a, a, a energetic particle comes through and it energizes the little gas atoms that are inside there, it gives them enough change to their electrical state that they allow capacitance. A little tiny bit of electricity will jump in between the, 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 the rod in the center and the tube in the outside. The, the Geiger counter then detects this and makes a click. It doesn't tell you how much energy. All you know is that the energy was at least as high as the threshold of energy for your Geiger counter. Not much. There are other ways to tell if it's gamma, alpha, beta, and you have to know what you're doing to do that. And of course, I can do that. But um, if you hear the ticking, that's the Geiger counter detecting alpha, beta, and gamma, which it apparently can't detect. So I'm now going to show you, because it's one thing for me to say, oh, I, I believe this, and for you to say, oh, well, I've talked to a physicist, blah, blah, blah. Let me show you, okay? This brick wall emits, I'm not sure if it's emitting alpha or beta. I haven't yet figured that out and I haven't really spent the time to do so. But let me show you it detecting it, because I know it's not detecting, it's not setting off gamma. Or if it is, it's probably setting off just a little tiny bit. See, if this were setting off gamma, this reading would not change if I got it closer, if it were only gamma. Because gamma goes through lead. I mean, you know, a couple feet wouldn't make a difference. It would be hitting this and it would be the same when I got to it. If it increases, then that tells you there must be something else coming out of it too. And the only thing I know of that will increase when you get a couple inches away from it are alpha or weak beta. Now you see the readings. 0.197 microsievert per hour. 0.186. Okay, it's clicking a little. Now we go over here. Now what happens? Let's get a good spot. Point two, point two one. There we go. Nice good spot. I mean, the brick's not heavily radioactive or anything. It's not going to shoot out the roof. But as you can see, obviously, the readings are going up. Now, why are they going up? Point two seven. 
because something other than gamma is getting detected by my Geiger counter. And I have an actual Geiger counter. This has a Geiger Mueller tube built into it. Look at that, 0 .11, 0 0.311 from something that apparently cannot detect what it's detecting. How's it doing it? Because Geiger counters can detect alpha, beta, gamma, and some can do x-ray. Mine has this thing in the end. See that little, that little grid? That grid is called a thin window Geiger Mueller tube. Inside there is a tube about the shape of a, of a AA battery and the end of it has this thin, this thin little tube on it that is, that it's very fragile and delicate. It's really, really thin. It's made of mica and it allows alpha particles to get in so they can be detected, which not all Geiger counters can detect. It's true. There are some but pretty much all the Geiger counters can detect, I mean really, pretty much all of them can detect gamma and most beta. I don't think I've ever seen one that only detects gamma. I mean just, just gamma. I don't think I've ever seen it. There are some that cannot detect weak beta, but all can detect gamma, all can detect at least strong uh, beta. Because that's just the nature of the physics of how the thing works. You don't need a physics degree to know that. Just look in a science book, you can see how the thing works. It makes sense. You can just look at mine and ipso facto, there it is. Okay, see? That would be Latin, by the way. So, um, isn't it funny having it tick like that? It's still all angry about having been by that brick. Look at it. It's not up in the threes anymore, but it's dropping down. Oh, there it goes. It's dropping down slowly. And it goes up a little bit. But not like when you put it by the window. Okay. So, the next thing is plutonium and uranium. Plutonium and uranium, as they decay, often put off alpha particles. But a lot of them also, like uranium for example, and it puts off alpha particles, yes, but it also emits uh, gamma. Look at most websites where they show the decay chain and they'll just show the alpha. But look, and they often always make a little notation on there that it emits gamma too, which it does. Uranium puts off gamma and alpha. Its primary decay is alpha which is detectable by a Geiger counter that either has a pancake Geiger-Mueller tube or a thin window like this one Geiger-Mueller tube. All right, one that does not have a pancake and, or does not have a thin window could not detect it. All right, but it would detect the, the gamma rays coming from it. They, this wouldn't tick very much. Mine detects it just fine. If we were sitting out here in this nice natural setting and a cloud that contained particles of uranium or plutonium were to drift by, I would detect a slight change in my Geiger counter. So what I do is I run my Geiger counter 24-7 with software that, that takes a baseline average and develops a statistical trend that tells me that I get, which I do at my house, approximately 14 counts per minute on average. If a large cloud of, you know, Fukushima, uh, Daiichi, power plant, you know, uranium floats by, my average over the course of several hours will go up. 15 counts, 16 counts. Statistically, it will go up beyond the plus or minus inaccuracy rate of my Geiger counter. If you use a little science, you can actually determine and see for yourself what's happening. And that has happened, and I've already posted it and shown people. But it just bugs me when I hear these people always telling these things about Geiger counters. Do you own a Geiger counter should be the first question as you make comments about Geiger counters. Do you even own one? Have you, ha do you have any experience using one? Do you know how they work internally? I know piles of physicists and scientists, and they, they, they know all about these things. I, if I were to sit down in front of them and tell them that, well, I've got a Geiger counter that only measures gamma, they would look at me and say, wow, how did you accomplish that? They could understand not alpha, but they wouldn't understand not beta. Even the old CDV 700s, those big yellow ones from the 1950s, even they have written uh, a measure gamma, uh, beta. They even had a tube on the end of their, their little probe that you could twist that would switch between gamma and beta. I mean, they even have a, a thing for doing that. Go to uh, GeigerCounters.com, MedCom.com, any of those places, and look up the specs on the Geiger counters. You'll see for yourself. All right. Now, whether there's plutonium or uranium making it to where I am, that's debatable. And no, you would not very easily just pick it up like crazy because it's hard, you need statistical trends to find it. I'll give you that. But of course your Geiger counter can read beta and gamma. Mine does it all day long. And alpha too. So this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and bye bye.